In this video, we'll discuss the batch sync data, sync data, the copy data tool, and the job data file. All right, I'm gonna open up in my collection here, example and restaurant, I'm gonna open up the utility drawing. And we've already assigned property sets to objects. If I click on a pipe and I go to the extended data tab, you can see I've got the property sets here. But if I go all the way down to the pipe uh, property set, you can see there's uh, the underscore value properties and nothing is showing on these. Now these are what are called the sister properties. There are formula properties that are set within the style manager to not be visible in the palette. Those properties automatically will sync over to the sister properties on save of files. So if you're wanting to sync your data out to your job data file, the Excel spreadsheet, the, the way that you would have to do this is you would run your batch attach extended data, attach to every object, and then you gotta go through and open each drawing in Civil 3D. And the reason why you have to open it in Civil 3D, um, we can't do this with via AC Core Console uh, because formulas are not loaded up fully in AC Core Console and they're not evaluated to present their the, the values of every object. That only happens in a full session of Civil 3D where the formulas are present. And with that, we cannot write formula properties out to Excel using AC Core Console because of that as well. So all the only option we have here is to open each file in Civil 3D. And as you're working in it, if you make edits or things like that to your objects, as you click save, you'll find that you'll see uh, some data show up here in the command line. And let's just run it, we'll click save. You'll see that it's running, uh, updating the sister properties. It's updating .NET properties as well and syncing those over to the, the sister property definitions. And depending on the number of objects, this may present a little bit of a lag um, in saving. but it is crucial in allowing this uh, data to write out to the job data file. So if we scroll down, now we see that these sister values uh, all have the data on them. They're synced over from the formulas. So once that is done on every file, then you should be fine to sync data out to your job data file. And again, that will happen as you're working in your files. Um, the way that it works is it's using the DWG props. If the file has these DWG prop names with the values, then it will proceed with updating those um, properties. Now, when I mentioned the .NET properties, if we go over to Style Manager and take a look at uh, Gravity Pipe, the formula for gravity pipe actually has a formula in here that's accessing the API. For pressure pipe, there is no API access from a VB standpoint within property sets. So what we've had to do is we've made manual properties. And so, and there are a few others that we weren't able to find a VB uh, property that could sync over such as uh, alignment rail width is not exposed in the API from the VB side. So that is a .NET property itself. There's not a matching sister property there. So for all of the pressure pipes and a few other stragglers, um, we're syncing over a .NET property. And so that runs after the formulas and essentially we're using a .NET mechanism that is able to access the API and fills out these property set values for you where it finds those uh, those properties. So all that gets updated, you save your files, and then we're able to sync over to the job data file. Now, 
I'm going to switch over to my layout drawing that I have open here, and then we'll run the sync data tool. And this is this one here is a singular. It's going to work on the current open file, and it's going to tell you it's going to take a minute to run. Uh, so we'll click yes. And then what it's doing is pulling in all the property sets from the job standards file, and then it brings up this dialog. So which direction do we want to go? We want to go civil 3D to the job data file, and we're going to overwrite all the data. Click next. Here's the list of property sets you can pick and choose from. You don't have to sync all of these. Um, in this case, we'll go ahead and sync everything, but you can simply uncheck all, check all, or you can expand and check and uncheck certain ones that you want. And then you click sync. And while that's running, you'll see the sync processing here. And the job data file is saved. Now you can open the job data file from here. I'm going to click close to show you a different way. From the ribbon, we have three buttons up here. I'm going to click the open job data file. And what that's going to do is it's going to read the drawing props and pull up directly to the collection and job. If you're in a file that is not assigned to a job, then you would see an error, an error message here to go ahead and pick your collection and job. Now you can pick any collection, any job, and it's going to open the associated job data file. But this will pull up right with that. You click open, and then we'll get our job data file that is opening on another screen. And so here we see the job data file. Now again, from the instructions tab, anything with gray headings in the columns, those are columns that uh, are uneditable within the job data file. Column headers with no fill pattern are data that you can enter in. You can also not ed be able to edit formulas and automatic properties because we can't sync those back into Civil 3D. So we've grayed those out um, for that case. Now, if we go all the way over to, say, Entity Polyline, we do have the ability to sum up values. So you could do a search or, or, or trim this down to just the items on a specific layer, and then you could use your Excel functions and sum up numeric values. If we go back over to some properties that we can edit, such as this tab, or this property set, I should see that these names down here correspond to, directly to the property set. And let's say we wanna change the component installation date. So let's set this as 1030, 2022. And then I'm going to save this file. We'll move this off screen because when I'm going to sync this back into this drawing now, and we're going to use the sync data. And because we're syncing back in, the job data file can remain open. If we're writing to the job data file, it must be closed. But if you're coming back from the job data file to Civil 3D, it can remain open. We're going to overwrite all data. Click Next and then you have a, a filtered down property set list that is only the properties we can write back to in Civil 3D. And then we'll click sync. And it's telling you that the job data file is open. It could be outdated. Uh, we'll go ahead and click yes. I've already saved that. And then the process will import the data back in. So now if I click on some of these entities, and go to the extended data tab, they should all say 1030 on them. So that's how the singular sync data tool works. Next, we'll look at the batch sync data for processing multiple files. So I'm going to close out of these drawings. And now we haven't synced anything from the utility drawing yet. Let's go ahead and save this again. 
and it's going to update the sister properties. While that's going, I'm going to close my Excel, my job data file. And then from Job Explorer, which is docked on the left side, I can run the batch sync because our ribbon is grayed out. So we'll go ahead and run batch sync. And then I'm going to pick my collection and my job. And I'm going to go ahead and sync all files. We'll click next. It's going to pull in the property sets from the job standards file. And we're going to sync civil 3D to the job data file. We're going to overwrite all. Click next, make sure everything's selected here and click sync. And again, this could take a few minutes to run. So we're going to go ahead and let that run. Now, this is its own standalone app, so you can move this off screen and you can work on another project or some, some other file while in Civil 3D while this is processing. All right, so the job data file has been saved and everything has been synced over. We're going to go ahead and open the job data file. All right, so now we have our job data file open and if we look across the bottom, we should have more tabs now because we have more uh, property sets that are being synced over and object types that it found. So if we take a look at the parcel tab, we should have some parcel data showing up. We should have our tin data, which there wasn't a tin surface to actually output it looks like, or that that data, um, the sister properties were not synced or saved in those files. That's why they're all coming out as NAs. So I would have to open the files in here that it's um, showing, save them in Civil 3D, and then reopen them to get the data to come out of these surfaces. But I know that the utility file did have some gravity pipes in it. So we can take a look at that data and we can see our pipe data showing up. So here's endpoint values. Start invert, end inverts. All that data is coming out of Civil 3D. If we go over to pressure networks, we should see some pressure network data showing up because there were a few pressure pipes within the utility file. So yeah, we've got some part types, the, the pipe names, lots of information coming out, being extracted right out of Civil 3D over to these, uh, over to the job data file. And again, now we can close this part. And if you wanted to make edits to that job data file and sync things back, you can come back in here, leave everything selected or whatever you want for your selection set. And then you can switch to data file to civil 3D and update all the entities back in there. Um, and so everything would come back and have um, their uh, property set data updated right from the job data file. That in a nutshell is how the batch sync and the sync data work and how the formulas and .NET properties uh, work within SDT and how the job data file can really help you push data around between your entities and your various model files. So as we continue forward, uh, the next video we're gonna discuss the validation tools and what the, how those can help you with uh, your property set data.